Good evening. I'm Randall Gill, the president of the Boynton Beach Historical Society. And I welcome you all to this meeting tonight. And we are really happy to learn more about Nathan Boynton and the establishment of his amazing hotel back in the 1900s. Our speaker is Janet Norton, who is a past president of the Boynton Beach Historical Society. She's an award-winning author, historian, and professor at Palm Beach State College. We're delighted that Janet is with us tonight and, and I know that you will enjoy Janet's program. She uh, has a real gift of telling stories and making history come alive. So Janet, we welcome you and we're eager to hear your presentation tonight. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, this is exciting to be in front of all of you uh, presenting from home. So give me just one moment, please, while I go ahead and share my screen. Hey, there we go. All right, so tonight's presentation is entitled Lure of the Sun, Major Nathan Boynton and his Boynton Beach Hotel. So when people move to Boynton, like most of us have, I know some of us have grown up here and known Boynton all of their lives. A lot of the things that they get to learn is how to pronounce the word Boynton. And we've seen it quite a few different ways. Then people often wonder why the city is named Boynton. And when they find out it was named after a man, sometimes they're a little bit surprised because if you start thinking of towns in Florida and cities, especially even here in Palm Beach County, you'll note that there's really not very many towns at all that are named after a person. So I had one of my first introductions to the man behind the name, Nathan Smith Boynton, when I was at the Boynton Women's Club. They have a beautiful mural at the building on Federal Highway, 1010 Federal Highway, which was painted by artist Bernard Thomas. So you can see on the left there, there's a picture of Major Boynton when he was actually quite young. And then on the right, there's a beautiful color rendering of his hotel. But people often want to ask, answer the question, really who was Nathan Boynton? And it was pretty complicated because he didn't just have one job. He had many, many different jobs that he did over the years. So if you look at the little word cloud here, um, you'll see some of the different things that he was. But I can tell you that he was born in Port Huron, Michigan. He's a descendant of the English Boynton family. And his ancestor, Sir Matthew Boynton, was the person who brought over sheep and pigs from England. Um, his mother was of um, Spanish descent from Cadiz, Spain. And he was reared, he attended school in Illinois, and then he went off to Cincinnati where he studied as a doctor. He was listed on the census and it was there that he met his wife, Annie. So Annie and he ended up having six children and he held such a variety of different jobs. He made some patents. He was a newspaper editor and owner. He was a postmaster. He was mayor of Port Huron, Michigan for over three times. So his name um, or title major comes from the Civil War where he served from 1962 to 1965 on the Union side, of course. He started out as a private and then he went up through the ranks in the 8th Mission Calvary. So there he is, kind of a blurry picture of him. That's the best that we could do. Um, but when he ended his career in the army, he was now a major. It's interesting that he was always addressed as major because I have a son-in-law who is a major in the army and most people don't um, address him that way. So Nathan Boynton was probably most well-known aside from this hotel as the founder of the Order of the Maccabees. 
So um, the Maccabees are a fraternal organization and they like to say that it's the modern order of the Maccabees. So he founded them up there in Michigan. You'll see it's a very distinguished photograph, um, newspaper printing of him. Um, it said that he was 51 years of age and he was a member of the Beehive Bazaar in this city. So their groups were called hives. So um, if you were a member of the organization, instead of it being a lodge, it was a hive. So this is Port Huron, Michigan, where he lived um, year, actually once he came down here, he lived there in the summers and he was a snowbird. He was probably one of the original snowbirds here in Boynton. And there on the right is the Boynton House. You can see it's quite prestigious, Queen Anne or Victorian in nature. And that house in certain ways still exists today. He actually lived on Huron Street up there. These are some of the inventions that he did over the years. He invented some fire equipment, and then he also invented things that had to do with the Maccabees, like this flag here and like this insignia pin. I see that his signature as an inventor is there on the right side of the screen. On the lower right side, you'll see Nathan S. Boynton, inventor. And if you look on the next picture, which is a cabinet card of him, you'll see that he's wearing said insignia and he also signed it and you can see that it says N.S. Boynton. So he autographed that cabinet card. Um, here's a picture which is the same picture but it was done for the newspaper and it, it said that he was elected mayor of Port Huron. So he was actually mayor of Port Huron while he was coming down here to Boynton. So obviously he wasn't a Boynton resident. He was actually a snowbird that would come to visit to get out of the cold like so many people do. Um, if you note near his necktie, he again has on another um, order of the Maccabees insignia. So here's his family. This is his beautiful family. Um, you'll see the two sons and the three daughters and then his wife next to him in black in the front row. Um, this was a Boynton family photo that was actually given to the Boynton Library by descendants of um, one of the daughters. And it was colorized by our um, Ginger Peterson. If you look in the back row towards the left, you'll see the daughter Annie. The daughter Annie was the one who ended up living in Florida permanently. And her husband, A.E. Parker, managed the hotel. And then he became the city manager of West Palm Beach. So how did they get down here? You know, people were looking for warmth, but they didn't have the airplanes. They didn't have the good roads and automobiles. So they had to figure out ingenious ways to get down here. So this is a tropical trunk line map. It was dated 1894. It shows some of the different transportation routes from Michigan down to Florida. So they would actually sometimes take um, the rails over to the Atlantic Ocean and then they would take a steamboat um, down and then they would come down the very last part on a boat, a small boat for inland waters. So this is an inset of that same particular map. So you might be able to see it a little better in here. Um, they're showing the whole state of Florida on the left and you might notice that um, where we live, they call it the pineapple lands. And then a little bit further north, they call that the sugar lands. And if you see over there where um, there is no point in there, it shows Hypoluxo. And then Lake Webster, which was one of the lost Boynton lakes or lakes of Boynton. And then you'll see that it goes down just a little bit further and you'll see Boca Ratones. So the way that he got down here was um, Captain Fred Voss. He's actually um, married into the Oyer family. So there he is with his um, wife, Lily Pierce Voss, who ended up marrying an Oyer, an Oyer. So that's the connection there. But what they did was they ferried in 1894, 1895, three people down the little waterway. So the waterway had just been dug. It was part of the Florida East Coast canal line system where they widened the canals to make boat traffic navigable. 
Um, so it was William Seeley Linton who was, um, ended up having land in what is now Del Rey, Major Nathan Smith Boynton and David Swinton who was a bookstore owner. So they were on a land prospecting trip. Um, this is sort of what the Intracoastal Waterway at Boynton looked like. This is from a postcard, original postcard from my collection. It says the East Coast Canal connecting with Lake Worth. And they would come down in what they called a um, little naphtha launch. So the person on the right, I don't think that that is Fred Voss. We're pretty sure that that's Fred Dewey and the Dewey dog, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the said little boat, which would have had, you know, three, four people in it looked like. So some accounts that talk about Major Boynton coming down here, um, there's been a couple of accounts that have been propagated over the years. They said that when they sailed down here, he looked out at the land in Boynton and he said, I'll take this. Well, there's a little bit more to that story. And I'll try to tell it as best as I can briefly so that we can get on to see all the beautiful pictures of the Boynton Hotel. So basically the land um, belonged to George Charters who sold it to Bird Spillman Dewey in 1892. You'll see this little ad that was in the Tropical Sun which was the local newspaper here, land for sale. So he was selling some good land and then he was also selling 160 acres lying at the end of Lake Worth because that's kind of where the terminus went before they widened it. Um, you notice like the Lake Worth Lagoon north of here is a lot wider than the Intracoastal Waterway. And it said this track embraces oops, <laughs> some excellent coconut, pine pineapple and vegetable land and is part hammock. Yes, it sure was. So this little chart, um, for those of you that want to examine it later, because I'm not going to spend a whole lot on it, the left side represents the east side, which is now Ocean Ridge. And the right side represents the west side, which is now Boynton Beach. So over there, you'll see in 1877, a Canadian, Dexter Hubel, had an 80 acre homestead claim. So he applied for the government for free land. He never did anything with it and he abandoned it. So then Stephen Andrews purchased it and he made a claim. He paid 90 cents an acre. But Andrews was living over at the Orange Grove House of Refuge with his family from 1880 to 1897. So he never really did anything with it. And then came William Seeley Linton in 1895 and he supposedly purchased the beachfront land from Andrews for several thousand dollars. I'm not quite sure of the amount. Now, look over to where Boynton is. You have George H.K. Charter in 1891. He paid $240 for it. In 1892, he sold it to Bird Spillman Dewey, who was the author of Bruno, well-known author. She bought that for $700. Then in 1895, William Seeley Linton offered Mrs. Dewey $6,000 for the land. So he had a contract on it and he agreed to pay her $1,500 a year for four years. Wow, it looks like she could have made a lot of money. But it didn't exactly happen that way. So in 1898, after selling lots in Boynton and Del Rey for $50 each, Poor Mr. Linton became insolvent and burned his creditors. He left the Linton settlement and the settlers renamed it Del Rey. Now this whole time, Boynton was a silent partner in Linton's dealings. So the Deweys filed suit against Linton, settled out of court, and um, they ended up platting the town of Boynton. They also platted Sui's, Dewey's subdivision. So technically, the city of Boynton Beach could just as well be called Deweyville or Dewey Beach. And in 1909, they built their home, Ben Travato. Um, Nathan Boynton, on the other hand, he planned a hotel on Andrews land and he also filed for Boynton's subdivision. So these are some of the plat maps that are down at the courthouse in West Palm Beach. 
and you'll see that this is the Dewey Plat. So they platted it September 26th, 1898. Um, they also filed Dewey Subdivision, which is over where Sterling Village is sort of situated. And they divided the remaining lands, which along the canal, it was called back then, into five acres of five acre farming tracks. So people could live in town and then have their farm along the highway. Um, this is a little bit better view of the actual plat. So you can see the streets. Lake there is now Boynton Beach Boulevard, um, which is going the east-west road. And then you'll see the Florida East Coast Railway and Ocean Avenue is still where Ocean Avenue is. Um, there's been some talk with the Historical Society and with the Historic Preservation Board to maybe get some of those streets um, not really renamed after those, but to have additional signs put above or below them to designate their historic designation as the original town of Boynton. So these are the uh, Boynton subdivision, and it's a little bit blurry. Um, took as good of pictures as we can, but you'll see that that's over there on the east side in what is now Ocean Ridge. So what was going on in this area in 1897? This is a masthead from Guy Metcalf's newspaper, The Tropical Sun. Um, these are just a few little tidbits. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you'll kind of get the gist of it. So you might recognize some of these names, Al Bowen, C.E. Chase, H.B. Murray, Adolf Friedland, Thomas Neely. And what were they doing? Well, growing beans, squash, and other garden truck for home use, pine fields, tomatoes, or you might say tomatoes, fancy pineapples known as pines, and bananas, go figure. So um, the date for Boynton's Hotel has been um, a little bit of a myth. It actually did not open as early as people had thought it was. He had been constructing something, but he hadn't been constructing the hotel. I think he began with the house. So this is from the Port Huron Daily News. It's from 1898. And it's actually announcing that he's going to build the hotel. So it says, it is this lovely spot where December is lovely as May, where fresh fruits, vegetables, and flowers may be had for the picking throughout the year. And then it goes on to say, um, he's chosen it for his winter home. Here he will rear a spacious 28 room, two story, and basement cottage hotel for the accommodation of himself, family, and friends to enjoy the cream, as he expressed it, of the Florida climate. And then um, it says that he's been paying out thousands of dollars for improvements. He had a large force of men at work for several weeks, and work will continue through the summer. And then there's an announcement that the hotel is going to open. So this is also from the Port Huron Daily News. Um, it was dated January 12th, 1899. It will open on January 16th, just in time for the cold weather up north. A pleasant and convenient hotel just built and newly furnished, located on the ocean beach in the town of Boynton, foot of Lake Worth, 12 miles south of Palm Beach. It can be reached by Florida East Coast Railroad or by launch, sailboat, or steamer. A quiet place with pleasant surroundings for parties who wish to remain for a period to enjoy the, and this is key, the healthful climate of South Florida, away from the hurly-burly of large, fashionable hotels. No formality, no stuffiness, everything pleasant and sociable. And all this, including dinner and food, home-like table service for $2 a day and upwards. Sign me up. So here, this is in contrast to Henry Flagler's more opulent hotels of the time. So um, he's trying to say, come as you are, no hurly-burly. And this is the very first picture of the hotel. This is in the same newspaper that was making the announcement um, before. So at that time, 
They actually just called it the Boynton. Why not, right? And this is um, a view facing west. So this is a view from the water to the um, hotel. And it says overlooking the garden lands. So the Hypoluxo garden lands and the garden lands in Boynton were very well known for their fertile soil and for their great vegetables. We even have a floor scheme. So this is the first floor plan. You can see that there's 10 chambers and a hallway on the first floor, surrounded on all four sides by the veranda. So of course, if you were sitting outside along the ocean bluff, and this was actually on the ocean ridge from which Ocean Ridge gets its name. So it was at least 20 feet above the other lands in the area. So of course you had a beautiful view of the passing um, ships. And these are the coconut groves. So um, the coconuts were probably um, planted by um, Andrews. And then this is in 1905. So by this time, the hotel has become a success. People started to know about it. Travel was getting a little bit easier. And um, so this is 1905 and they said they're doubling the capacity of the Southern Hotel the capacity of the building will be doubled and many improvements for the greater comfort of guests will be made. So that actually included regular electricity and phone. The hotel had the first telephone in this region. So here's another ad for um, December 13th, 1905 announcing that they're going to be opening the next year. And they also sent out some folders up north so people could see all the beauty. I wish I had one of those folders. If anyone has one, please donate that to the archives. So it says um, the hotel opened December 15th. Hmm, it's starting to open even earlier and to stay open later. It's claimed that Boynton is the finest and most attractive location on the East Coast. And it also says the temperature of the ocean water remains at 75 degrees the year round. So here's some pictures. Most of these that you're gonna be seeing are actual postcards. So this is what is today Ocean Avenue. And this is going east towards the hotel. You'll see like the sand road and the pines, palm trees. And then this is a familiar picture, but this is um, the lighter. And this is the way that you would get across the hotel. There was no bridge until 1911. So look at that, um, they're crossing on the ferry. And then there was another um, larger lighter or ferry that would accommodate um, the horse and buggy, so or donkey and buggy. So you can see that that's like a whole group of people, a little happy party there, and someone is pulling them across. So this is a really lovely um, picture. This, it says it's Boynton Avenue looking west. So they're there right in front of the hotel, and you'll see the horses or the donkeys, and then you'll see the little cart. So it's sort of like the Surrey the little Surrey with the fringe on top, if you will. And um, so now you're looking to the east and you can see the farmland and how beautiful. And if this was in color, imagine how picturesque it would be. The little um, Surrey also says painted on it is Boynton Hotel. Now this is the same picture, but this has been written on. We know of course it's before 1907 because that's when they had the um, undivided back postcards. Anyone who's a Deltiologist would know that, but to make it easier for you to see the writing that's on the front, I went ahead and I transcribed it. And Gertrude writes this and she says, Dear Claire, I know you would enjoy this. We are sitting out on the front porch in white dresses without wraps. It has become so hot that we had to come in. So this is sort of like the Facebook of the day where people are going, oh, Florida, they're teasing me with all of their beautiful pictures. Here's another postcard. Again, this is an undivided back postcard. This picture is of what they call the Spanish River, west of hot the hotel. So what this is, is if you think where Oceanfront Park is, 
And then there's the Wellington Arms condominium across the street from there. This is that little finger canal back there that's called the Spanish River. And, um, you know, they came here for their health too. So this writer says, we've been here one week and Miss Miller has gained 10 pounds. I guess that means it was good, right? Or the food was good. This is just back of our hotel. The little children found an alligator on an in. And also to go with the health and like being a resort and being healthful and, you know, they had famous water. Who knew? Who knew about Boynton's famous water? So this is the Times Herald up there in Port Huron from 1905. And it says famous water taken from Major Boynton's plantation will be used at hotels. Major N.S. Boynton says arrangements have been made whereby all the East Coast hotels in Florida will handle the mineral water from his plantation during the common season. It'll be served the same as wine in fancy glasses. So here's a really cute little postcard. It says meditating under the coconut tree, Boynton, Florida. I have no idea who that person is, but I thought it was kind of idyllic. It looks like he's trying to pose for some cheesecake photo. And it says, we was at this place yesterday for lunch on our way from Miami by auto from Sadie. And you'll notice that a lot of these postcards that I've acquired, they come from Michigan because that's where most of the guests originally originated. Here's the, an ad for the water again. So this one is even better. Look at how they're marketing Boynton's water. Coquina water from the Ponce de Leon well, Boynton, Florida. It tells you that it's a diuretic, it has curative properties, it's been tested. It can be drank all times of the day and night for morning sickness, sick headache, heartburn, sour stomach, and it's absolutely harmless. So they were selling it all the way up there in Michigan. Mm -hmm. So he also had connections as a politician. He really was a politician. He um, reached out, he would send boxes of fruit up to Michigan, send them to places in Illinois and try to like um, convince people how wonderful it was here in Florida. So you'll see over on the left, that's Napoleon Bonaparte Broward, the governor of Florida. And then on the right, you'll see Fred Warner, the governor of Michigan. So they're all sharing gifts. And of course, Major Boynton is the middleman. <clears throat> Um, now we're going to see some more pictures of the hotel. So now, if you notice, this is actually looking west. So you're, the view, the camera person, the photographer was from the ocean. And you can see that veranda with that wraparound porch and those beautiful rocking chairs. Just makes you want to just sit there all day. And then you'll also see some of the cottages. And there was also the restaurant. So this is a beautiful view of the dining room and you can see that it has all fine wood paneling and fine inlaid doors. Um, it has lighting above there and also the white tablecloths and fine silverware. And this is from Gertrude again to Louise. The table marked is the one we sit at giving us a view from the window like Claire's card. Um, here's a little swing set out there and you can see a schooner in the distance. Um, this is again sent to somebody in Port Huron, Michigan. So now we're looking at um, 1906. This is another article from the Tropical Sun and they're basically saying that there's been new furniture for addition coming to the Boynton Hotel and being delivered across the canal. Can you imagine that on that little lighter? Um, it says the rock road is in and around Boynton being repaired. So um, they were actually starting to not pave with oil, and, but more like with rock. Um, and guests are arriving on every train, and this will be one of their best seasons. No expense has been spared to make the hotel one of the best in the state and feel safe in saying it's the best for those who do not care for the social affairs that are so popular at the big hotels. So in other words, this was more homey. They had music, they had art, they had speakers, um, they had sports. There was also a shooting range nearby. Um, you could 
get the vegetables right from the garden to the table. So now we're looking at an article from the Miami News in 1906, and they're talking about the aforementioned A.E. Parker, who married Anna Boynton, the daughter. So it says, Mr. Parker of the Boynton Hotel was in Palm Beach Wednesday on business, going there in the launch Boynton. So this is not a picture of the launch Boynton, but it's a picture of a launch that was probably about the size that they would use and they would actually have excursions and take people to Palm Beach so that they could see and tour the other fine hotels and then come back to the peace and quiet in Boynton. Um, this is another cute hotel, um, I'm sorry, cute postcard. Again, you'll see it's um, 1907. My dear honey, I would love to go down to see you, but really I don't think I'd better go anywhere till after the exams. And so she's sending her penny postcard to Fort Lauderdale. Another postcard, the, this is a really great view of what the cottages looked like. So the cottages um, were even some of them two-story cottages. Now, once again, we hear about that famous drinking water, 1907. Don't fail on your way north to stop and stop off and spend a day or a week or a month at the Boynton Hotel. Modern improvements, splendid bathing, I love that word, an ideal location not excelled on the East Coast. Drinking water unsurpassed. Medicinal properties shown by analysis of the state chemist a certain cure for all kidney troubles. So I always say Boynton should actually be marketing their water. And again, it's sent for that descriptive booklet. Where are those booklets? Beautiful picture from the Boynton Beach City Library archive of 1908, the main building. Another good view of the beautiful hotel. So you can see that it was white clapboard. When they said that it had a um, basement, I used to think that it was um, a two-story hotel, but it actually has two upper levels and then the base of the hotel. And again, you can see it's raised up a little bit off the ground, typical of buildings at that time. Transportation was improving. Um, now that Henry Flagler's railroad was in and they were starting to build some roads, you can see that this little map is showing that you can actually go down and Henry Flagler was actually trying to bring his rail extended all the way to Key West and hopefully to Cuba. But you'll see that that is the railroad there in red. More postcards, 1909. So this one is kind of funny. So this is a beautiful picture and you can see the hotel and you know, it is quite impressive. And you can see, I think that's the dining room that is right there and two men over to the right. But the author wrote, when do you intend to pay that dollar you owe me? Couldn't you send it down here as I'm broke and need to pay my hotel bill? So this is actually from Mr. Wright who was married to one of the other Boynton daughters. So of course he could actually afford to pay his hotel bill because he didn't have one, but it's a little bit tongue in cheek. Now, eventually they ended up building this bridge over the Intracoastal Waterway. This was in 1911. Um, a tragedy had happened where one of the Austin girls, actually three of the Austin girls were trying to cross the canal and pull themselves across with the lighter. The, um, it was a little bit waterlogged and they had their dog with them and the dog was a little rambunctious and jumped from one side and the lighter tipped all the girls fell in the water with their big long dresses and petticoats and um, the one girl, Sophorona, she actually drowned. So um, Mr. Murray was the bridge builder. Mr. Murray built the bridge in Lake Worth. He built the bridge in Boynton, Delray, and he also built the bridge in Boca. So this was a swing, wooden swing bridge. Ah, there's that same bridge. You can see it off into the distance. So this is Ocean Avenue going towards the, the hotel. On the left, you'll see a house that you can just get a little bit of glimpse of. And that was the Lyman Boomer family house. Um, we'll talk about Lyman Boomer at, at the very end of this presentation. Another cute postcard from 1911. Dear cousin and all, I wish I could, you all could be down here to enjoy this nice place. 
and vegetables and fruits. We had new strawberries. I wish you could see all the pretty flowers. And look at this was addressed 110 years ago, February 15th, 1911, strawberry season. Now this is Ocean Avenue looking west. So you can see um, pretty much what the town looked like at the time. It was um, very rustic, if you will. Um, the sign that's over there on the left that you can see just the back of, that would be when people got off the train, they would know which way the hotel was. Another beautiful picture from the Boynton Library. <clears throat> this is from the Mary Linehan collection. You can actually see the um, outside staircase of the hotel, like a fire escape type staircase. And again, you can see some of the gents that were standing around there. Beautiful picture with the palm trees. You can almost just smell the ocean. And speaking of the ocean, here's another scene around the hotel. You can see that four masted schooner. Here's the hotel with the beautiful century plants out in front of it. And then that there's that same swing set for the little children. And this is another scene around the Boynton Hotel. And you'll see all of the beautiful coconut trees. Now, Major Nathan Smith Boynton died in 1911. He died in Port Huron. They said after kind of a lengthy illness, he supposedly wasn't very well when he came here, which was one of the reasons why he wanted to winter in Florida. But he actually died of cancer. And um, they said at the end, he was overtaken with the grip. Um, here's his obituary. I'm ob obviously not gonna read the whole thing because we wanna end on time, but it basically says pioneer citizen of the town of Boynton and owner of the Boynton Hotel on the ocean beach. So this was from the Miami metropolis. And um, it talks about his different things he did. And it does say surviving him are a widow, two sons, George Herbert and Lincoln C and three daughters, Mrs. Anna Parker, Mrs. Francis Patterson and Mrs. Edith Wright. And he actually has a very, very simple tombstone. This is just a simple pillow marker that says Nathan S. Boynton and the dates of birth and the dates of death. Kind of surprising. So again, here's the hotel. So A.E. Parker, which was his son-in-law, took over managing the hotel. He was um, very good at it. They, um, you know, they would hire the different help. They would arrange transportation, advertise, and all of those things. I love this picture. So this is Ocean Avenue again. I'm not sure which way, but either way, it's just very beautiful. And you can see now how the coconut trees have matured and they have that natural bend that they do. So this is a cute postcard. This is from 1913 and it says, tell everybody to write to Boynton Hotel, Boynton, Florida. Dear Carolyn, the little town is about a mile from our hotel and this pretty road is our only sidewalk. It's certainly beautiful here and such a climate. The ocean is only about 100 feet from our hotel and this is such great grand bathing. Tonight, we have a marshmallow roast on the beach with love, Margaret. Um, so now here's another one from 1913 and it's addressed to somebody in Michigan. Won't you return and bathe with me? First at 6.30 on rising and again at noon. We do enjoy it here as you did. Today, a real ocean gale is roaring. So um, February and it sounded like it was a little stormy like this morning. And here's another beautiful card, grounds of the Boynton Beach Hotel. And if you can just imagine it all with the greens, different shades of greens and different shades of blues, Again, this is greetings from this summer land. And that's what they called it, the summer land, winter and summer or summer and winter. Now, in 1913, they were gonna talk about the new season of 1914, but it, the rates went up, look at that. The rates are now 250 a day, comfortable cottages on oceanfront in connection with hotel for preferring same. Now this is interesting, um, they're talking about it and this just describes it. Um, 
I, I love reading these newspaper articles because it really can bring you back in time almost more than the picture can. So it, it says that um, the beautiful Boynton Hotel, which has enjoyed a splendid, there's that word again, patronage for many seasons under the popular management is rapidly filling with guests. The resort, which is situated on a bluff overlooking the broad Atlantic is unrivaled for those who prefer a quiet retreat. There's plentiful amusement in the way of lawn croquet, fishing, boat riding, duck shooting, indoor games and music and dancing. From the spacious veranda, one can watch the breakers as they dash against the shore. Or if the inclination leans that way, you can take a dip in these delightful waters or go shelling. Now, all good things must come to an end. So this is an October 1920 Palm Beach Post article. And this talks about that the Boynton family in A.E. Parker has now sold the hotel. They've sold it to an association from Chicago. Um, and it lists some of the different people. Actually, um, George Boynton is gonna be one of the vice presidents and Mr. Atwater, treasurer. And you know, the Atwaters are still here in Florida. But um, this was kind of sad, but it does say in the very end, here is another thing that will be different from the ordinary hotel with the idea well in hand for making this club hotel, while we shall not refuse to cater to those who are not members, there will be special rates made to all those who are financially interested, mm -hmm, money talks, right? And the proposition and this fact alone will be an considerable incentive to swell the manx of Rem membership, what aids Boynton will aid the entire county and the proximity of this hotel to the many attractions to be found in West Palm Beach will prove a boon for that city. With Boynton Incorporated, as it is now con contemplated most seriously, and it was, they were in the midst of being incorporated and the Boynton Beach Hotel doing its utmost, I feel there will be a splendid growth of all of the immediate vicinity. And that was a prophecy. And it pretty much came true, at least for a little while. Now you're going to be treated to six or seven just beautiful pictures. So this is the East Coast Canal bordering Boynton Beach Hotel property. Um, it was actually a, a toll canal. The East Coast Canal would charge a toll for boats that were coming through. Again, there's that beautiful road from the Boynton Hotel to the village of Boynton. And you can see the little car way down there. Um, these were hand tinted. This is the sign out in front. It said, of course, this is the Boynton Beach Hotel where ocean bathing is the finest. And this is another view from the front where you can see the dining room off to the side. Um, again, you can see the um, fire escapes coming off from the top and it is indeed, <clears throat> I think that they had added on to it by now. And you can see if you look to the very top by the roof line where it had the old name, the Boynton. But it does look, I'm counting one, two, three, four floors and an attic. On the ocean front at the Boynton Hotel. Just gorgeous. View of the ocean from front veranda of Boynton Beach Hotel. Avenue leading through the Boynton Beach Hotel property. And at the Boynton Beach Hotel. So this is the bathhouse out behind the hotel. Now things were really starting to gear up during this time. You notice the hotel had been sold to be like a club rather than just a regular hotel. All kinds of things were happening. They were um, digging or planning to dig the Boynton Inlet. It wasn't a natural inlet. That's 1923. In 1923, there was more work on Boynton's modern water system. Mains leading to the Boynton Hotel have been put in place, more construction. Another beautiful picture from that time period from the Boynton Beach City Library, Mary Linehan collection. And then in 1924, there was a proposed 
$35,000 Bank of Boynton, which did get built. This is what was the beginning of the great Florida land boom and bust. All kinds of things were happening. In 1924, they said, now the Parker property, lying on both sides of Dixie Highway, 22 acres has been sold to people from New Jersey. The attractive property with its desirable location will be subdivided and placed on the market. So all of those other Boynton subdivisions, Boynton Hills, Boynton Park, different ones were all going up. And then it also says another recent sale, this is on the right side, which is creating considerable comment, is that a large track of the Ocean Boulevard just north of the Boynton Beach Hotel. It was sold some time ago by Mr. A.E. Parker. It was rumored at the time intended to erect a large modern hotel. They wanted fireproof hotels at this time. And then look at the price of it. Oh, just a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So, but this is what the town was looking like at the time. So you can see this is Ocean Avenue. We're looking from probably about where not quite the railroad tracks are looking east. So you can see the bridge. And then the cross street here is what we call today Federal Highway. It wasn't much, but that was about to quickly change, or so they thought. So this is in March of 1925. More plats, more new subdivisions. Some of you might live in some of these places. Bowers Park, Boynton Beach Park, Country Club Estates. And then, in 1925, Fort Lauderdale News, Addison Meisner had drawn plans for a 2,000 room hotel in Boynton projected to cost between 8 million and 10 million, touted as one of the largest and most magnificent hotels in South Florida. And you know, we had connections here in Boynton with Meisner and there was a lot going on. And that was how the Boynton Women's Club was built. At this time, the building was being planned for the new schoolhouse. And this is what they envisioned it. So this, isn't this great? This is one of my favorite slides out of the whole thing. This is their prophecy from March 7th, 1925 as Ocean Avenue Boynton will look in 1930 because there were elevators invented and they were starting to build steel buildings and skyscrapers. So you can see how busy Ocean Avenue could have been. Like, look at it, it looks like it's at least two or three lanes in each direction. Um, if you look to the very right, you'll see the Bank of Boynton, which is where then Dutch Realty, and I think now it's another realtor is. And then you'll look and there's that same bridge to the back, but now it looks like a big steel bridge, like something going across the Ohio River or something. And um, you'll see the different hotels, Hotel Blake. And there they were thinking that this is what the town was gonna look like in 1930. And then what happened to Major Boynton's hotel? Well, this is what they were planning and um, George Harvey had platted this out, all Boynton Beach Park, and he was planning some of the high rises. So you'll see in the very distance towards the back, the town of Boynton, the Florida East Coast Line Canal, and then you'll see Ocean Boulevard, which is A1A towards the front. And then you'll see Beach Drive and Parker Drive and also Hudson Drive. So some of you that live in Ocean Ridge are very familiar with this and Ocean Drive. So again, this is um, the Harvey Realty. They were planning all kinds of things. The Gulfstream Country Club was being built during this time. So you'll see the polo fields and they were really trying to uh, play onto all of this luxury. It was changing so quickly. The jungle transformed into Florida's finest country club in one short year. Now, it says noted Boynton Hotel may be improved. So it is, this is 1925, April. The Boynton Hotel has closed for the last season. 
and its long life as a winter hotel. Property recently changed hands. Developers purchased all the property of the Boynton Hotel and it calls for tearing down the hotel building. And this was stuff that was happening. So they proposed the Cassandra Hotel at Boynton, which would be on the northwest corner of Ocean Avenue and Federal Highway. The new building of 104 rooms will be the latest type in construction. This is what it looked like. The steel construction was going up. This is from the Lake Worth Herald, 1925. 1925 was, I would say, the most important year in Palm Beach County history for building. And this was a little play on words of the year 1925, $1,925 cash will buy you a house and a lot on a paved street in Boynton. The George Blake, they were doing country club estates. West Boynton was also growing the dollar land and home company. So that was uh, between the Boynton Canal and Lake Avenue on Nichols Boulevard. So that's right behind the Boynton Beach Mall going towards Lawrence Road. Um, they held a sale. So this was a sale to start work on the wreckage of the Boynton Hotel, but you could buy things, hot water heating plant, bathtubs, lavatories, toilets, electronic fixtures, even ice boxes. So. I don't know who got that stuff or where it is, but bring your truck with you. 1925, again, among the wisest and greatest of men. And then they quote all of these rich people and tell them that they need to invest in real estate. This is the Chamber of Commerce in 1926. The Boynton Highlight put this out. Do you know the location of your town? And then it goes on to basically have a Chamber of Commerce kind of thing. Um, it says Southern California bathing waters 20 degrees colder than here, which is true. Spend a winter here and you will be a Boynton resident the year round. Did that happen to a lot of you? Now, this is interesting. This is a little bit of another prophecy <clears throat> and I think it's worth reading. We're just about finished here, but this is from July, 1925. And they say Boynton is one of the few towns along the East Coast incorporated to the ocean from which affords the town five miles of beach. The excellent bathing facilities and the magnificent ocean vista of Boynton Beach are leading to its development along ambitious lines. And then it goes on to what the different things that they're doing, but we had five miles of ocean beach. Then what happened? Well. A lot of different things happened and that's almost a whole different presentation, but there were two hurricanes in 1926. There were two hurricanes, including a very deadly one in 1928. There was also problems getting building materials in and the people were buying on credit or buying land unseen. So basically the whole thing fell apart just to put it in very simple terms. And there the hotel sat. Things didn't get built. So many grandiose plans in the works. Now, um, I'm going to go back to that one because I, I messed up with that. But this is also what happened with the Hotel Cassandra. The little Magnuson boy, Kendall Magnuson, and another chum were playing in the pit where the um, elevator shaft was for said hotel. And the little boy was five years old and he fell into the hotel shaft and drowned. And his friend was helpless to get him. Now this, a lot of people are going to ask, and I, I hope you have questions for me, but a lot of times people go, well, where exactly was this? So the next two slides are supposed to try to show you where the hotels were. So this, remember the name Lyman Boomer? So Lyman Boomer had lived here when he was a little boy. When he was about 30, he came back and he tried to draw what he remembered when he was 10 years old, back in 1909, 1910, when he lived here. So um, this has been also colored by Ginger Peterson, colorized, but it is numbered. And it's one of the most magnificent early maps of Boynton. Um, but you'll see the hotel is down here at the very front, right by the beach. 
Um, and they're all labeled. So that's number 11. So if you go up here to number 11, it'll say Boynton Hotel. And then you'll see the truck fields where they would grow things. Um, the old graveyard, so this is not exactly to scale. So that's over um, by the water treatment plant. It's Boynton Memorial um, Cemetery. And it goes all the way out here to, it stops at a lake. So that's part of the Lost Lakes of Boynton, which is a whole other presentation too. But Boynton had five lakes that were all filled in. And also being true to form, you'll see over on the right, you have the Negro section, which was where the African-American and Bahamian people were actually, um, they bought up, white people bought up their houses in the 1920s and relocated them to what Victor Norfus says was a reservation. Basically, they, because of Jim Crow, they weren't allowed out after dark and they basically had to stay with their own kind for the most part, except for working. Um, and then I think we're just about at the very end, but I tried to make a little footprint to give you an idea of where the hotel was. So the big yellow square with the arrow was the approximate footprint of the Boynton Hotel up on the bluff overlooking the ocean. And then you'll see that there was the um, restaurant building and then some of the different cottages. We had heard that one of the cottages had still um, survived up until about seven or eight years ago, the Atwood Cottage, and um, it had been built around. It was probably one of those we can save on taxes if we keep a little piece of it and then construct other things around it. But that house, again, with all of our layers of history, that house, again, has disappeared, been raised. So what's left of Major Boynton here in Boynton besides the name of the town? So the Boynton Women's Club was dedicated to him as a memorial by the Boynton family. So they donated $25,000 of the construction and they said that it will always be a memorial to their father. And it's on the National Register of Historic Places. Now up in Port Huron, there is a marker on the Maccabees building, and that actually has a picture of Major Boynton. This is the Boynton home and gardens. Don't mind my typo at the bottom, but you can still actually go and visit that. And one of these days, I'm gonna go on a research trip to Port Huron. Um, and now I'm gonna open it back up for questions, but I do wanna play the credits because um, I couldn't have done this presentation without all of the archives, without the wonderful newspapers that are now becoming available online and the interviews with people, except for the Harvey Oyer III who have gone before us. So thank you. This is Ben, hi Janet. Hi. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much. I learned an awful lot. I just have one question. Um, what about, um, the people who built the hotel, I mean, were these Bahamian immigrants, were these people that were brought from out, outside of the area to build it? Do you know much about the labor that was used to build the city? Good question, Ben. So the head contractor was Horace Bentley Murray, and he was from Michigan, and that they sent the family down to live here. He was... Um, a lot of the people from Michigan, because of the lumbering and the different things, that they were very good at that. Now, they could have used local help. That I really don't know. I've seen newspaper articles where they said that people were building or installing, but they didn't really say who. So uh, that gives me something to search for. Kate says, very nice job. Thank you. And Annie says, thank you. Very informative. Love our beaches. Thank you, Janet. Oh, you are welcome. It was my pleasure. I could have gone on and on, but I knew that we wanted to, you know, we have a long drive home tonight, right? Right. Well, I think it was just fascinating how much history you can learn from those postcards. I mean, how, how people felt and, and what was going on. They're, well, like, they're like today's tweets, little nuggets of information. Right. Well, we appreciate so much what you've done in collecting these postcards and how you've just really helped us to understand more about what happened historically 
long ago. We really appreciate it and thank you. Thank you, Janet. Sheila here. It was a great presentation. And to one postcard collector to another. Thank you, Sheila. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Great job. Thank you very much, Janet. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.